because his thoughts are not our thoughts. His miracles are not our miracles. Do you think that when I started my pilgrimage up and down the neediest section of California, Highway 99 from Red Bluff down below Bakersfield, where the gangs are, where the needles are, where the homeless camps are, where the poverty is. And here's a man over there, Frank Saldana. I've, I've got my offices in the Bay Area, and he calls one day and said, would I preach under a freeway? And I preached everywhere. I've never preached under a freeway. And so I said, yes, I'd like to preach under a freeway. I don't know who's going to be there, but when I got there, there were 500 lost souls sitting under that freeway. Many of them were homeless. Many of them were addicts because inner city action had gotten them all together for me to preach to. That's right. So now, Frank and I develop a friendship. I said, I like you, you're crazy, I'm crazy. Let's see what kind of craziness God has for us. Then the Lord says, Highway 99 is a river of my glory where the gangs operate, everything from MS-13, everything from the, the red and the blue gangs and they're not Democrats and Republicans. The Norteños, the Soreños, the violence, the crime, you're gonna see thousands say. So we put up our tent. We have did it against the law. Gavin Newsom said, don't put up your tent in Fresno. You're a super spreader. I said, man, I've been called a lot of things. That sounds good right there. And uh, so nobody got COVID, souls get saved, and I didn't think of it. I didn't know. Kenneth Copeland calls me and he says, I see you need a new tent. We're going to buy it for you. So we tell him, well, it's going to, Brother Copeland, it's going to be 100000 He said, we'll give you 100000 He did. Then I found out you're, you're not getting the right size tent. Well, I, it's, well, how big should it be? 40,000 square feet? I said, I never thought of that. 40,000 square feet. Over 5,000 people a night. Our first tent crusade was 300 people a night. Now we're going for 5,000 people a night. I'm going to say it again to see if there's anybody who's spirit filled. My thoughts are not your thoughts. They're nothing like your thoughts. So I was telling a guy, man, we got $100,000, but the tent we've got to get is 187000 Somebody leak that information to Brother Copeland. He called me and he said, I understand I didn't give you enough. So I'm sending you another 100,000 right now. So the tent is paid for. Listen, our sound system is paid for. Our LED wall that we're buying is paid for. Everything is because God is on the move for something bigger than any of us realize. How many of you want to be a part of something big? How many of you want to be a part of something big? Every young person, listen to me. There's a reason the devil is trying to make you fear your future. Because it's so big and such a threat to him. But how do we get over depression? Do you know that for... Americans are weird. Americans are so weird. We're weird. How many years did the doctors tell us to jog? Jog? Well, I, I had an opinion on jogging myself. Bible said the wicked run when no one's chasing them, you know? So. So you couldn't get Americans to jog until someone said, let's run a marathon. So the problem with Americans is that it wasn't long enough. They wanted to go 26 miles. Now here's the same thing. This is the same nation that virtually had no army when both Germany and Japan declared war on us. We had no army. 
But in the San Francisco Bay Area, we started building two battleships a day. Ford Motor Company in Detroit was building a B-25 bomber every 60 minutes. We revolutionized mass production to defeat evil. That's in our culture, that's in our nature. But the greatest sleeping lion are these people in all over America, millions of them. One's like Peter, one's like the man at the gate, beautiful. One's a drug addict, a handicapped person, suicidal, a single mom that's desperate. And then there's the church. And inside of the church, there's a core of people that walk out of Christian concerts and they go, that wasn't it. That, that, that was just really hollow. That was empty. There's got to be more. And they, they go to church and they hear sermons that insult their intelligence and placate them and make them sound like at any moment they're going to backslide and trick them into loving God. They, it, here's what David McKenna said in the book, Fire in the Fireplace. He said, a congregation will promote a man as a pastor to superstar status if he will agree to keep the rightful demands of God off of their life. But the problem is, mediocrity, if you like it, lukewarmness, if you're toying with it, has its downside. And it's called boredom. You know, depression goes away when you start to say, I'm not on this earth to survive. I'm not on this earth to pay my bills. I'm not on this earth to continually do the same boring rut. The lightning power of God needs to strike your soul. And to say, you are a weapon in my mighty hand. That's what happened to Peter. Because what's happening out there is the phrase, and with it I'm close, I'm done. Because I, I got to preach again tonight. But I'm getting all my preaching done now because tonight is just going to be fire of God falling on, on people. And they're going to get... I gotta, I'm going to finish right now. You say there are yet four months and then comes the harvest, but I say to you, look to the fields. And the Living Bible says it this way, vast fields of human souls are ripening. 